Hi, in this video I'll be talking about the CDK4-6 inhibitors. What are they? Who are they useful for? What side effects might you expect? And then some other considerations. Breast cancer cells that have the hormone receptors, estrogen and progesterone receptors, are said to be hormone sensitive. And we know that when those cells receive hormones like estrogen, those cells are sort of encouraged to divide. Not all breast cancer cells have the receptors and certainly they can divide. So it's not required but basically estrogen and progesterone facilitate the growth of hormone receptor cancers. So that's why we use estrogen receptor blockers or anti-estrogens in the treatment of breast cancer that's hormone receptor positive. These agents do not work in people whose tumors are hormone receptor negative. A new class of drug or relatively new class of drug are the cyclin dependent kinase 4-6 inhibitors or CDK4-6 inhibitors. These drugs block the enzyme that converts, uh, that's involved in metabolism of estrogen, let's put it that way. And in combination with hormonal therapy, these drugs have become the mainstay of treatment of advanced or metastatic breast cancer. So rather than start with chemotherapy or endocrine therapy alone, we use endocrine therapy and add the CDK4-6 inhibitors. There are three that are currently available and of course others being developed. The three are in order that they were approved, palbocyclib, ribocyclib, and amasiclib. And we have the brand names right here on the screen as well. These drugs are taken as pill uh, in a pill form and usually combined with aromatase inhibitors or fulvestrant and as the endocrine therapy they go along with. We don't usually use them alone. So they're taken as pills and uh, there are a few differences in how the medications are taken. They can be taken either in a cycle where you take them for a couple weeks and then have a week off or daily. So that might determine whether you, which one you go on. If you need that reminder and want to be on something every day, then you will want to talk with your doctor about that and not skipping a day. Again, they're taken um, by mouth. You'll want to talk with your doctor and pharmacist about what time of day to take them and whether to take them with food or not. We at Yerba don't want to give um, specific pharmaceutical advice to you but your team will help you with those specifics. Let's talk about side effects. The most common side effect is lowering of the white blood cell count. And it's really, really common for us to have to decrease the dose. It doesn't mean it's less effective. We're just working on finding the right dose for you. We tend to start at the approved dose and then go down as we need to so that you can be on the biggest dose possible, but not, um, such a big dose that you have to keep taking breaks from the medication, though that's not uncommon. I would say four out of five people need to have some adjustment in the dose or how often they take the medication, especially when they first start it. It doesn't mean it's not working. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. So low white blood counts. The other side effect that's very common is fatigue and dose adjustments can help with that as well but that's really common. It doesn't mean the cancer is getting worse or that you're doing something wrong. Shortness of breath is not all that common, but enough that I um, have seen it in enough people. And when I see shortness of breath, unless there's another cause for that in somebody with cancer, I will give a break from the CDK4-6 inhibitor or maybe even switch to a different one. And that's been very effective. Also, if you start on endocrine therapy and the CDK4-6 inhibitor, and then you have a symptom that means you can't keep taking the CDK4-6 inhibitor, you can just stay on endocrine therapy alone 
And having started with the CDK4-6 inhibitor, we can often see a pretty rapid response and sort of a dampening down of the cancer. We can always reintroduce the same one you were on or a different one down the road. Remember with advanced cancer, the most important thing is that we find a treatment you can be on for a long time. Because if you're miserable on a treatment, we're not achieving our goals of helping you feel better and live a good long life. You're actually living a sort of crappy life and you don't wanna do that. We certainly don't wanna do that to you. One of the CDK4-6 inhibitors can also cause diarrhea in about 80% of people. So if your doctor tells you that you're going on one that causes diarrhea, you'll wanna be prepared for that and also prepared for a dose reduction if that does happen for you. The last side effect is financial. These drugs are very expensive and it's possible that you can get a grant to pay for the cost of it, but that's something to consider. If you're in a country where we, where you don't have universal health insurance, um, it's likely that finances are gonna play a role. The companies that make these drugs will often provide assistance to help you. There's some downsides about that as well that I won't go into here, but not downsides for you, but really for the cost of care overall. Now recently, abemaciclib, the third one I mentioned, has been approved for treatment for two years in people who have high risk hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer and um, the other drugs have not been shown to be effective. It's probably a matter of how the studies were designed, but it's likely that in some people with, for example, stage three ER positive HER2 negative breast cancer, we can see an improvement in outcome as long as you can tolerate the drug and it's not taken forever, it's taken for two years. That was recently approved in the US in patients with higher risk breast cancer that's hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative. I've covered a lot. I've talked about the CDK4-6 inhibitors, what they are, how they work, how they're given. Um, they should be given only in people whose tumors are ER positive or PR positive and HER2 negative. They're taken for people with advanced cancer and abemaciclib can be taken in people at higher risk of recurrence who are treated in a curative setting side effects, you'll want to hear about the whole list. I've covered the top ones. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, click like, that helps other people find it. And if you click subscribe, you'll see the other videos we've made. And as always, you can go to yerba.com to get your personalized report and drop a comment or a question below and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can.